Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! A South African high school has been accused of racism over the way it treats its black students. Pupils at the Pretoria High School for Girls, which used to be whites only under the apartheid regime, say they have been told that they must straighten their Afro hairstyles and must not speak African language in school. Simeon Brown reports. Is your hair political? In South Africa, yes. Here, black African students at one of the country's most prestigious schools have been in protest against their school's hair policy. They allege that teachers put pressure on black students to chemically straighten their hair, more in line with a European appearance, and limited the girls from speaking in local African languages. Local officials have had to intervene as the girls' campaign has forced a global conversation on the politics of Afro hair once again. Five years ago, this high court overturned one school's ban on natural hairstyle, cornrows citing racial discrimination. But Afro hair remains an area of dispute here in Wide Field. And there have been high profile campaigns against rules prohibiting natural hair in the Caribbean and the US. Abner is part of a growing natural hair movement that is booming online. It encourages black and mixed race women to wear their hair naturally. Basically, they would prefer us to do everything that is not from us. They want us to have the straight, long textured hair when most of the time we're not born with the straight hair. So why is it that it's okay for me to have a weave and be accepted at an interview rather than come with my afro? It's not right. And that's why we're taking a stance now because we want to be accepted just the way we are. I mean, what do you make Black women say they've been made to feel that their natural hair is unruly or unsuitable for work, which in the past made them want to hide it. My worst nightmare was like my hair would come out of the ponytail so that people would just <laughs> see my hair out. Why is it that black hair seems to be such a political issue? It's not, it's not us that's making it political, yeah. but the mere fact that you simply allow your hair to grow from your head yeah. in, in its natural form is read as a political act, I think is deeply, deeply significant. Why is this so political? What is it about our hair that makes you scared of us in an educational environment because people are there to learn? Every single person who works somewhere or studies somewhere has a code that they say is appropriate. What would you say to somebody at home who would say, well, everyone has codes to follow? So why is the benchmark European hair? And especially if we're talking about this case in South Africa where the majority of the population are of black African descent, why do they have to um, subscribe to a European standard? Why don't we say, OK, everybody has to come to work or come to school with Afro hair? Would, would you ever straighten your hair now? No, I just feel like if, I'm, if I have to straighten my hair because of a job or any type of you know, demand from somebody, I feel like I'm conforming. I feel like I'm not being myself. My hair has always been natural. This is a part of me. This is all I know. So me straightening, it, straightening my hair for somebody else, I feel is losing a part of me because that is not who I am. Well, the school has said that it will work with the local education department to resolve the issues raised there. I'm joined from Johannesburg now by Shanti Abu Baker, who graduated from the school in 2004. If this is what it's like today, what was it like when you were there? It was, um, it was, it was similar. We, um, over the past few days, have been recounting what our experiences were like, and they were, they were similar. I do think that in some ways it's become worse. Well, I mean, it's, it's, I suppose it's worse in the fact that it's 2016. How is this still happening, that we're seeing South African black children protesting against white prejudice? I mean, part of the discussion in the country for, for some time now has been the fact that um, residual racism in South Africa um, emanating from apartheid has not all been eradicated, despite progressive legislation and a, and a black uh, progressive uh, state. Um, so I think what is fantastic about what's happened is that we again have had a national attention drawn to this issue at a state school and there's been a groundswell of support for these very brave and courageous young women who are no longer prepared to accept the status quo. Do you think this is just a, a weird one-off or is this a more widespread issue in South Africa? 
I mean, in fact, today there were revelations about a school with similar hair policies in Port Elizabeth, which is in the Eastern Cape. And uh, as I understand, uh, similar schools to Pretoria High School for Girls have um, proactively um, suspended their hair policies, which were also would also be deemed to be problematic. Has the, has the way people wear their hair changed at all, or is, or is it is, is this just a, a sort of anachronistic set of you know a, a set of schools? Uh, so, do you mind repeating that question? I'm saying, I mean, are people wearing their hair any differently in South Africa today to how they were 10 or 20 years ago? I don't think so at all. I mean, I, I think the, the other really important thing to, the point to make with regards to Pretoria High School for Girls and the general debate on transformation in the country is that this is not an issue around hair. This is an issue around uh, decolonizing uh, institutions of education across the country. It began with the Fees Must Fall protests last year at South African universities. And to bring it back to Pretoria High School for Girls, um, we as alumni are very, very much aware that the, the issues around hair at the school are the tip of the iceberg. Um, there were experiences recounted yesterday on live national television about girls being called the K-word at school, reporting it to the school management and having nothing done. And, and so I think it is important that internationally it's also understood that the debate has moved beyond just the issue of hair at Pretoria High School for girls and across the country. Shanti Abubakar, thank you very much indeed for joining us.